Scoops here. We're in for the Panthers squad. There's so much to talk about here. There is a very interesting piece that they have, and that is round three. They have a buy. There's a lot of interesting guys. Can we find some value? I think we can, but do you decide to pick them, or are you going to stay on the fence and probably fade them because of that round three buy? Scoop, what are your thoughts on where the Panthers are going to end up this season? There's a few guys that are talking about them missing the four. Do you have them in that top four? I don't think they missed the four. They have too many good players and a good system going. They're almost starting to turn Storm-esque. I think Coruscant is a big loss and kick out too, but I, I have them probably second. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're clear. Still top four. Probably have a few squads ahead of them. Potentially, I think I can see Sharks with their real consistent um, team that they've built probably you know, just winning a lot in the regular season if they win or not the whole thing I'm not sure but I can see them in the top two or three uh, along with the Roosters if they stay fit Panthers will be somewhere in that three or four I'd say this year but that's all they'll need to, to you know that they know how to win these big games at the moment but we kick it off let's get straight into Nathan Cleary unfortunately he gets bumped up with that low score that he got uh, when he got sent off which was a uh, not great because I had him as captain that week but 66.9 price point the year before last he had an absolute banger of a year do you think he can get back to that or do you see him scoring somewhere around that 67 I think Cleary is a good chance to score 70 plus to be honest he had that six week leg injury i think coming into the beginning of last year he missed the first three or four weeks and started off with a 44 and a 58 before he turned back into the regular good scorer so if you take that out i think he probably pushes 70 this year yeah and as you said in there in the comments he's obviously a clear gun that you could pick up as captain should be the first or second best scorer this year behind you know Hines potentially and then you've got guys like cook murray potentially you know Payne Haas if he gets back to full health so for people that are interested in him I'd say completely go for it I think he's going to score great let's just ask this question now would you suggest people some people are asking if they should have Cleary and Hines in their team do you have any interest in that theory or maybe some downsides to doing the double gun there I think it's probably too much if you're spending 20% of your salary cap on two out of your 21 players I think you're really going to have to cheap out on your bench or have to avoid picking up sort of those really interesting mid-range guys like um, Burton or even like the Carrigans. I think you have to lose at least one or two of those really good guys in order to do that. So I think just one is probably the best option. Yeah, and if you're going for one of them, Cleary or Hines, they both have a buy in round three and round six. So you're going to miss out on one of them. I just suggest that you have someone that's going to score somewhere around that 60 mark 62 63 that can you can have as captain in that game because i think most people are going to have one of them as captain or they're going the cam Murray route uh, is the way to go but yeah they're both going to have a buy in that first bunch of weeks so um, don't stress too much about that with your top gun because they're all going to miss uh, certain games with buys and you're most likely with these types of guys going to try and hold them for the rest of the year you can get a bit cheeky if you've been able to hold a lot of trades through that middle period but uh, and trade them out but yeah someone like that i wouldn't be stressing too much about uh, we're going to leave cogger out of it we go straight to Stephen crichton there at 614k for him Average of 43 last year. He really came out of the blocks and did great with the goal kicking and then mellowed out a little bit. We were still average, able to average really well. What's the narrative on Steven at the moment? Being on that right where there's no kick out now. I think he'll benefit slightly being on the right now with no kick out. So they'll go towards more Cleary side and Toto on him. But he does lose a little bit of value because of the uh, goal kicking he had early season while Cleary was out. I think he'll sit in that low 40s again, just there's more value in other expensive sender options to start the season. Yeah, well, let's look at their draw to kick it off. And obviously the buy in round three we spoke about, but round one Broncos, round two Rabdos. So both not simple games by all accounts. And round four Eels, five Raiders, and round six the Seagulls. Do we think that the draw matters too much for a really good team like the Panthers? Or are you looking for these types of players and the outside backs even in good teams to come up against the real easy ones so they can get some cheap tries i think it's less important in the really good teams but in all honesty although it looks reasonably easy and they don't play like probably a definite top four team until round 11 
it's probably the toughest schedule that doesn't play one of those super hard teams because guys, the Rabbits, Eels, Broncos, Raiders um, could all potentially be in that top eight on the bottom half of it. So no definite walkovers, but probably still all wins. Yeah, most likely. Um, we move to Dylan Edwards, who's always been really solid. He does tend to sit around that 45 average. Are we just going to avoid him for now, even though he's such a good player? Yeah, he's got a ridiculous base, but he isn't the type of... He's a very good NRL player, but doesn't ver- do what we need for fantasy. He's not a tackle-breaking, running-around player like James Tedesco. And so he doesn't get that 10 points in tackle breaks a game. I think he's always going to sit at that low 40s average. He's one of the best fullbacks in the game, but just not one of the best fantasy fullbacks in the game. Yeah, for sure. Matt Eisenhuth comes in at 544, an average of 38. Got plenty of minutes when Yo and Leota were out at certain times. We need an injury to, I'd say, Isaiah Yo for him to get really big minutes because he does score great. Um, so just wait until that happens, guys, and then we'll speak about him anyway. We move to Fisher Harris, and what are our general thoughts on him? Would you look to him in the middle part of the year, potentially with him having not playing Origin, or do you just avoid him altogether? He is very close to being avoided altogether because he only really just about touches 50. I think he's yeah. averaged 50 in the last couple of years, but 48 last year. I'd say unless he drops a bit of cash for some reason, like he gets a head knock and goes off and drops 50, 75k in the next few weeks, you could then pick him up around origin time, but probably not this year. Yeah, I agree with that. He's kind of that one who you just, you'd be burning a couple of trades on him when you get him in and you're not going to start with him. So that's that. Luki Garner comes in one of those really good mid-range options there at 478, the average of 33.4. He's had plenty of good years on the Tigers' edge, and they're not as good as a team as the Panthers. What are your thoughts on him, Scoop? Yeah, Garner's probably one of the safest cash cows to start this year. He's got an average in the back row close to 50. It has come down in recent seasons, though, and I'm not completely sure why. When he debuted, it was close to 60 average, and then sort of 50, and then high 40s, and then it, it's... Hard to project what he's going to do this year. I'd say it probably will be because the Tigers were probably getting worse and worse and just wasn't developing as much. In the Panthers, though, super good at attack. He's in kick-out spot, though I like to put him through holes. He's a good line runner, but that might also mean they go to the right more because he isn't a kick-out. So I think there's the risk that he might not score 15, but I think he's an easy 10 points of value. Yeah, and... I think part of that with, with Tigers is that he wasn't given a real clear role the last couple of years. He'd have some bench games, he'd have some starter games and probably lost a bit of confidence as well, I'd say, compared to when he first came in and was just, you know, raring, raring to go. Plenty of confidence there. Zach Hosking at 479. Gee, I love this guy. He's one of my love interests of, love interests for fantasy, that's for sure. He gets a, a little bit of a, a drop in his price point, thank God, um, with how this season's gone so far. But a 50 average in his four games in the back row, potentially keeper scores, as you said there, but we're worried about him uh, getting that potential role. With Garner there, do we just wait until there's an injury if he doesn't get that spot? Maybe, do we want him on the bench so we can get him a little bit cheaper later? Yeah, well, eh, I think one of Garner or Hoskin will get the spot and the other probably won't be in the team. I think Garner has to link with some of the Panthers coaching stuff and has played with them before at the Tigers. I'm not completely sure, but I'd say Hosking will have some time to prove himself in the Panthers system. Then we could see him at some point. And I think that 49.8, it also included like a 40 minute bench game. He was scoring like 50s and 60s and 70s in those couple games back into last year. He was an awesome cash down. Um, he, I think he'll score better than Garner if he's in the team, but Garner's really good anyway. So whoever gets it, buy them. Yeah, Garner at this stage might be better for what the way they type the way they play with him running good lines and stuff. But um, Hosking's going to be a great replacement anyway. We'll leave Jenkins there for now. We'll speak about him if we need to uh, if he comes up. But he's a little bit down the uh, the depth chart there. Mitch Kenny is an interesting one. I'd love to hear your thoughts on him at four twenty six, priced up unfortunately, considering yeah, they think that he's going to get that starting hooker role, which he probably will. Priced at thirty. What are your thoughts? I think 
he is a very big watch in the trials because at points last year, he did play in the middle in the forwards instead of at hooker. I think that it'll be likely that him and Luke have a 50-30 minute split and they'll both cancel out each other um, cancel out each other as options because at 30 points, with his not amazing PPM, he'll need probably 60 minutes at say a 0.8 PPM to make that to make that money. So yeah. at this stage, I don't think he's enough. Just watching trials if he does play middle, and in that case, there might be some more minutes going around for him and Sonny Luke. Yeah, so if you think maybe, what, 45, if he gets 45 minutes at hooker and maybe 15 through the middle, that would I'd say that would be enough, right? I would say that it'd tip him over into a buy. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, it's definitely look, look out for that one, guys. Because Spencer Lanyu, he just never seems to get big minutes, unfortunately, even when there are guys out. So he's someone that we can you can watch play, and he's, he's super talented. He's a barnstorming type of guy. He kind of gets into the niggle with a few players as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, I did, I did hear if, like a couple of weeks back that he might be getting more minutes this year, really. Like they always use him as that wrecking ball for 25, 30 minutes from the bench, almost like a, a Franklin Pele. <laughs> but um, he's the original at that. And I don't really see why the Panthers would want to change something that works so well. Yeah, unless he shows that he's got a big motor and he can do it for a longer period of time. Um, and they've got so many good forwards, right? With Fisher Harris as the, uh, the Yo's, for example, Leota, he's even, a, he's a, a great forward. So we'll speak about him now at 526 price of, uh, price of 37 average that as well. Never really been a fantasy option at that weird price. No, nah, he'll just do, he'll just do what he did last year. There's no real change for him. So not a keeper, not a cash. He just move, move on. Yep, and thoughts on Luai, very much the same price at 5.35. He had a good year a couple of years ago. Do we see him as an option this year or no? Nah, Cleary dominates all the kicking. Luai pops up, um, but he's not really the Dylan Brown type player. He works incredibly well in the Panthers team's um, deadly combination, both in Origin and in the Panthers, but I don't think he's going to make too many points more than 37 this year to warrant being a buy. Definitely. All right, tell me about Sonny Luke, the young fella that probably gets, as you said, maybe that 30 minutes or so. Do we think that 30 is enough? I don't really know. I don't think 30 would be enough. Maybe 35, but bench hookers are a difficult one to start with anyway, even if they are base price. So the trials probably will tell a lot more. If there's no minute split in the middle for Kenny and things like that, I think Luke's a big avoid. Otherwise, he might be a slow burn option in your emergencies. Yeah, definitely looks like he has some talent though. So don't rule him out. I don't think, guys, if you're if you're watching this one, Liam Martin at five sixty eight, priced at forty. Do we see him having much upside on that, or stick around the same? I don't, I don't, I don't the only him. upside really for him, so maybe a point or two, not enough. Hold on. Uh, try again. Yeah, I got you back now. Yeah, I got you back now. Cool. Start Liam Martin again. Start from. Yeah. Look, probably the only upside for him is Cleary's side. No kick out. They'll go right more, but maybe that's only a point or two. It's not really enough to buy him. Yeah, it just doesn't have, he has weird base, doesn't he? Some games he goes crazy with the base, and sometimes he gets like a 25 base, and it's like, yeah, what's going on? Uh, Taylor May, he was obviously he obviously turned out into being close to a gun last year, made us all a lot of money. 623k for a winger. Is that something you'd look to pick, or no? No, I think he's suspended to start the year, isn't he? I yeah. think Taru is going to start on that wing, so, I mean, just don't even bother looking at him, really. Yeah couple of weeks right and then yeah they've got the buy so yeah potentially an option at some point if they go on a run and he gets a bit cheaper but yeah not for now tyrone peachy a few people have actually been speaking about him he comes in at 380 is that too awkward of a price even if he was to get 30 to 40 minutes yeah he's sort of turning into a moses m type player where he'll do 
anything that he's required to do. There is a slight chance that he takes Sonny Luke's bench spot and might spend some time on the hook, but I, I don't know if he'll be on the bench. Yeah, does he even make the squad? I'm sure he's, yeah, he's in there for depth for sure. Uh, Jamin Salmon comes in. He's very cheap, 340K. He had some games last year where he did really well. Do we see him as just some cover? And if he gets a, a six spot or something like that, then he could be an option? He's only really probably a buy around origin, if at all, unless Cleary's gone long term, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, Chris Smith there, he's obviously an edge. He got six games last year, limited minutes for the most part. 336k, kick hours away. Well, he's left now. So what are our thoughts on Chris? We just need some, like two injuries for him. Yeah, it could be it could be Garner and Hosking out, but it might even be Sorensen out as well because Sorensen can play edge if he needs to. Yeah. Um. So probably too far down to look at. Yeah, well, he's another one of those mids that he can play on the edge and he plays that sort of 40, 45 minutes. You've got um, Eisenhuth who's the same. So yeah, I still don't probably see many minutes for, for Lanyu like we were speaking about. So let's speak about Scott now. He's at 509K. He's going to need to start and some big minutes to build on that, right? Yeah, and I think his ceiling isn't as good as Garner or Hosking and he is the most expensive of the three. He's probably close to a buy if he does start, but given his recent years, will he play the whole game on the edge? Will he only play 50, 60 minutes yeah. and then come off for some edge and some middle? So probably not a buy, but a little bit of value. So, But I, d I don't think it will be the edge. I th it'll think it's definitely Garner Hosking. Yeah, that's very fair. And we've got a few interesting ones to finish. Someone who I have interest in at some point during the year for sure, and that's Isaac Tungall there. Price of 42.3, 605K is pretty expensive at the moment, but I see him being a keeper. Do you see much with him? You've got there as overpriced to start the year? Question mark? I think I've got him as overpriced because I think the Panthers will go right more. Um, I think he does. With his background in second row when he was coming up through the juniors, he definitely has the good tackling ability and base to score well. Uh, and we remember how well he did start off last year when he was averaging like 55 over the first six to eight weeks. If he does get a fraction cheaper, I think he is a good pickup, especially through that origin period. We will have to wait and see on him because he is an option, probably not one of my favorites at the moment, though. Okay. Do you see To'o as a better option? He may or may not be good depending on how much it goes to the right side i guess <laughs> with tail and may there half the time now i don't think they rely on him as much to be that huge meter eater that they go to all the time there's options now with tango and may with the recent scoring changes that tackle breaks are only worth two points instead of three that would have brought his 2021 season where he's averaging high 50s down to the lowish 50 so i think he's got some value and definitely could be a low level keeper i just don't think he'll be top three for example yeah and he was carrying a few injuries as well last year had a bit of an interrupted season so definitely some upside in some capacity but a scary one as you said a risky potential keeper there uh taruva we're going to avoid him from the start given he's only probably got a couple of games to start off with what, are we hoping for him just to score pretty poorly in the first few games to get his price down and then pick him up if there's injuries? Uh, I, honestly, probably yes. Um, he only had three games and yet they didn't discount him. He's one of those he's one of those hidden overpriced players who should be cheaper than they actually are. Yeah. Um, 448k and Taylor made a comeback in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Huge trap. Yeah, super talented, but I'm keen to see him play for sure. And Isaiah yeah. Yo at 847, one of our premium guys in the game, averaged 59.3 last year, which was absolutely hectic. Uh, do you look to start with a clear gun mid like this, who's super consistent, but misses round three? I think Yo is the perfect example of a player who you pick up mid to late season to consolidate your final team. He's a guy who will score that 55 to 60, no nonsense no real downside, but no upside. So I'd prefer to go with guys even even 50K cheaper at like Payne Haas, who had a down year, possibly has some upside with some in, um, 
being fit instead of having injuries or Cotter at 100k cheaper or even Tarpanay before I'd look at Yo. But at the back end of the season, I'd probably want Yo in my team. Yeah, amazing. Well, that's the Panthers, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. There's plenty to talk about with those guys. And obviously, if you're not looking to pick anyone up at the start, then round four would be a great time to pick them up as they start to the Panthers start to get into their work. And also, guys, just check the, the description for the link to the private group. If you want to join the private, private Facebook group, get instant replies from me, get some merch, some JV merch. Lucky you'll be wearing that in the, the videos very soon and so will i um yeah it would be awesome if you can support me and the channel with everything we do here i'd appreciate that see you guys